What is going on everyone? My name is Jake and I'm going to be talking about all the credit cards that I've had as a 23 year old. I'll also share what I've learned from each of these credit cards and maybe you can learn something new. So my first credit card is actually the State Farm Rewards credit card guys. My mom helped me get this in 2017 as my first credit card. So this card actually does give a little bit of rewards. It helped me pay my insurance for my car. I think it was earning something like one or 2% back on the points for State Farm use only. This did help me cut my bill down for my State Farm insurance for my car just a little bit, but this is definitely a starter card, guys, and it only had like a $500 limit, but it was a great card to get started with. So one of the most important things about this credit card is that at, since I was just starting out, it really helped me learn how credit cards work, how I can pay it off. I learned what my credit score was. So I don't use this credit card anymore. It did teach me a lot about how credit cards work, and most importantly, it helped me get to the next credit card that I applied for in December 2018, about a year later. And that is the Discover It cashback card. So with this card, I wanted to get a higher spend limit of $1,000 compared to the 500 that the State Farm Rewards card offered. This would help keep my utilization at a lower percentage since now my credit total credit limit is 1500 instead of 500 Another awesome benefit that I did get was the 5% rotating categories with this credit card. My other, my other card did not give any categories and did not give any 5% back. I saw that Amazon was one of the 5% categories and with my regular spending on Amazon for books and supplies for school, I thought this would be a great card to go ahead and get. Discover was offering at the time, and I think they might do it still, a match of your cash back for the first year. This was awesome, so any rewards that I got, I was gonna get matched by Discover at the end of the year. I ended up earning about $150 of rewards for my first year. So when I was in college, I wanted to upgrade my bed, and this would cost more than $500, so upgrading to this credit card made sense. Unfortunately, as I was learning, I actually did max this credit card out to $1,000 in one month, and that was because I bought a mattress and some other stuff for the bed. I realized that that was a learning experience not to do. I ended up paying off everything within that month, so I didn't pay any interest. I realized how powerful it is and how easy it is to spend on credit cards. And then honestly, guys, I actually wanted a cooler looking credit card, and I saw that the Discover It card had the numbers on the back, and you could pick anything you wanted on the front, so I thought it was interesting, and I went ahead and got a picture of Manhattan on there. It didn't really help with the rewards, but I did feel like I was doing something, so that was really cool. Six months later, in June 2019, I decided that I was ready to apply for another credit card, and this one was actually the Chase Sapphire Preferred. I got the Chase Sapphire Preferred in college at age 19. When I was working as a grocery clerk, I used to see everyone's credit cards and I thought it was interesting and I always wanted to upgrade to a travel credit card. I saw the Chase Sapphire Preferred pretty frequently and I started to look up what the benefits were and how to get the credit card. This helped me learn about the Chase Trifecta and the Chase Ultimate Reward System along with the 6,000 point sign up bonus which has changed sometimes to 8,000 or even 100,000. So learning about the Chase Trifecta and the Chase Ultimate Rewards point system I wanted in. I kind of got attracted to that 60,000 point bonus as well as knowing that it was a metal credit card. And at this point, I was too young and didn't spend enough to really make that worth it. So I started to buy a few extra things to try to go ahead and hit that limit. And ultimately, it didn't really make sense for me to try to spend $4,000 to get the sign up bonus, but I did it anyway. Since it was such a popular card, I just wanted to see if I was gonna get approved. After tra tracking my credit score, it was really exciting and I thought, why not go ahead and apply? It could be interesting. So one of my mistakes was that Discover was still matching my first year bonus for spending and since I got the Chase card during that year, I didn't get the full rewards with the Discover card and decided to focus on spending on the Chase card. Another thing I learned is that if I were to get this card, I would definitely get the Chase Freedom Unlimited and the Chase Freedom Flex before. As somebody going for the Chase Trifecta and having just learned about it back at the time, I should have just went for the Chase Freedom Flex or the Chase Freedom Unlimited. The whole purpose of using credit cards is that you can get rewards for your normal spending and develop a positive return on investment. So if you have to go out of your way to spend to, mat to hit a credit card bonus, then that credit card probably isn't the one for you. At the time, I didn't really know this and I just wanted to get that card. 
This led to me products changing after my first year with the Chase Sapphire Preferred. I downgraded it to the Chase Freedom Unlimited and I got my $95 annual fee refunded, which was great from Chase. I probably should have went with the Chase Freedom Unlimited from the start, but at least I have it now. This card was great since I was still in college and I didn't need to spend a lot to make it worth it. And so that 1.5% back on everything was great to have. I still have this card open today and I use it for my everyday spend. And unfortunately, well, there was no sign up bonus when I downgraded since when you do a product change, you can't get the sign up bonus of the product you're changing into. So they just took my current credit limit and then switched the card into the Chase Freedom Unlimited. This card would go on to be the first key in me achieving the Chase Trifecta. So when March 2020 hit, everyone left my college campus and went back to their homes. I looked for a job initially on campus and did not find much luck since everything was shutting down. So I needed a quick $1,000, tried lots of side hustles to make money. With that, I found out that this credit card here from my local credit union, it was a 1.5% cashback card. It had a 16 month 0% APY intro offer and I decided that, hey, when I'm looking for a job, I need to figure out a way to take care of my finances. And I carried a small balance with this card for about two months, acquiring zero interest and it was paid off after two months. And by fall 2020, I decided to get a new credit card. I got the Chase Freedom Flex as my second key to the Chase Trifecta. I decided this was gonna be a good card to have and I wanted to get that 5% back on everything as well as get the $200 sign up bonus. I still wasn't traveling enough to make anything else really worth it and learning from my Chase Sapphire preferred mistake, I wanted to stay with zero annual fee credit cards and no high spending limit sign up bonuses. So the Chase Freedom Flex only required me to spend $500 to get the $200 sign up bonus and this was pretty easy as I was just buying groceries and car insurance regularly for myself anyway. So I think this is just an essential card to have around. It's $0 annual fee and it's part of the Chase Trifecta. And at this point, I realized that if I were gonna get the Chase Trifecta, I was gonna have to wait 48 months to get the sign up bonus for any Chase Sapphire card. You can only get the bonus once every 48 months and since I got the Chase Sapphire Preferred not too long before I got the Chase Freedom Flex, I realized it was gonna be about four years until I was gonna actually get the Chase Sapphire and complete my Chase Trifecta. So I just wanted to have everything ready for when the time came and I was just gonna be patient and wait for that 48 months. About 12 months after I got the Freedom Flex, I decided let's get a new credit card again. And in October, 2021, I was wrapping up college and decided Let's get the Apple card. So I decided to get this card because it is kind of a gimmick and I wanted to see how heavy it was. I actually just really wanted to see how thick it was because honestly guys, this card is interesting. If you've ever held one before, it's it almost doesn't feel like a credit card. It kind of feels like a piece of sheet metal. And I kind of just wanted to show my friends the sound it made when you dropped it on the table, which is kind of funny. And since it had 2% back on the Apple Pay, I like using Apple Pay and I decided that it might be a good catch-all card if I can try to use Apple Pay for everything. So with this card, there's no sign-up bonus and I think Apple is just excellent at marketing and makes this card seem like it's a lot better than it actually is because fundamentally this card is really nothing special. It just has a bunch of hype up behind it, making it really a cool card to try to get. I didn't really use this card that much. I kind of just wanted to show my friends the sound that it made when you hit the table. By the time I got this next credit card, I was already working my first job out of college and I decided, you know, traveling was something I wanted to do in my 20s and I started traveling more because I moved from Seattle to Chicago. So I decided let's open up a travel credit card and you know what it is guys, it's the best one right now. So I wanted the Venture X. I wanted to get more dollars back on my travel and this car had such a good sign up bonus that I was gonna make anyway just from traveling on my next trip to Europe that I had already planned. So it just kind of made sense to get this credit card. As a first premium travel credit card, I think it was definitely a great decision because of the sign up bonus and the travel portal gives such excellent benefits booking flights and hotels. Another awesome thing is that 2x back on everything. So this is going to be my new catch-all credit card, replacing the Freedom Unlimited. One of the main reasons why I decided to get a new credit card was because Southwest had canceled my flight in December 2022, leaving me stranded, and I had to pay out of my own pocket to get home. This credit card actually would have paid for 
$500 of my flight delay slash cancellation, which would have been great to have. If you wanna learn more about this credit card, I actually reviewed it and you can check it out right here. Excellent credit card, I would take a look if you're interested. So one of the most important things I learned from having all these credit cards is that you know your credit score is so important and working your way up the credit card ladder is really great. I learned that the most important thing to do with credit cards is to just be patient and don't change your current spending habits. Each credit card that I had along the way taught me something new and I think that's definitely a valuable lesson. So I just wanted to illustrate my journey through the credit cards and as a 23 year old, I think I've had kind of a, a lot of credit cards. I wanna review more credit cards in the future and talk about more personal finance topics. Check out my channel if you're interested and I'll see you later.